Alright guys, back with episode 8 of Imperialism. The next to last episode, we're getting down to the end. Some teams expanding greatly on the map. North Dakota, Oregon, Utah, especially Texas. Oklahoma State is getting very big. So is Indiana. They've stretched all the way down to the southern coast in the Gulf of Mexico. So is Stetson. Penn State took a whole lot of land last episode. UConn is now into the northeast. Let's go ahead and get started on episode 8 of imperialism. Akron up first. They're going to go southeast to take on who we were just talking about, Penn State. And Penn State wins again. They're looking pretty good. They expand now even more into the Midwest. Texas now going west to set up a huge matchup against Arizona. This one should be really interesting. For a whole lot of land and Texas smothers Arizona. 103-76. to Huge win for the Longhorns. And now they control Almost all of their state, up north of their state, and into parts of Arizona. There are only about three teams left in Arizona, matter of fact. Auburn now going north. It looks like that's barely going to put them up against Georgia State. And Georgia State shockingly beats Auburn 72-62. to And they will take all of Auburn's land, stretching down even into Florida, where Auburn took some of that land. So Georgia State, a nice win there for them. And they eliminate the Tigers. Drake now going northwest, take on Utah, the biggest team on the map. And actually, that's, that title is going to now go to Drake. They win 76-67, and Drake will take the title of biggest landmass in the nation. Cal State Fullerton isn't on the map. Virginia now is going northeast to take on Penn State, trying to expand again as Penn State. And Penn State's going to win again. They're looking really good. Possibly one of the favorites to win this whole thing right now. They're looking very, very sharp. They've won quite a few games in the last two episodes, especially. Before yet, not even playing before that. So now they stretch quite a bit. Georgia State going south. He's take on Stetson. Georgia State just expanded to see if they can do it again. But no, Stetson had not played in a few episodes. They come back strong. And Stetson now expanding up the East Coast to take even more land. 68 teams. This is the field of 68 for the NCAA tournament, if you wanted to call it that. This is what the map is looking at, looking like right now with just these 68 teams remaining. Georgetown now going southwest to take on George Washington, probably the smallest team on the map. And George Washington wins. Hofstra going northeast to take on Stony Brook. Hofstra wins taking Long Island from Stony Brook. Then that's their first expansion of the video for Hofstra. Back to the wheel we go. It's going to be LaSalle, who does not have any land. North Dakota, one of the biggest teams in the map, going west to face Idaho. They almost got Gonzaga, but they get lucky. Well, maybe they didn't get lucky because Idaho wins by 17. And now the title of second biggest land mass goes to the Vandals, who stretch their land far across the north. Alabama State now going west. That's going to run them into Indiana, who has no problem with the Hornets taking even more of the state of Alabama, which you probably wouldn't have thought at the beginning that Indiana would have almost the whole state of Alabama. But they do, and now Sam Houston going south to take on Texas. If Sam Houston beats Texas, okay, they don't. 78-56, Texas beats Sam Houston. Remember, Sam Houston had already beaten Baylor and Houston, but their run finally comes to an end at the hands of the Longhorns. Columbia does not have any lands. So we'll move on to San Jose State, who does have land going east. And they will take on Drake. And Drake survives taking some more land and taking out the Spartans to expand all the way to the West Coast. A huge piece of land now for them. St. Mary's could have taken them on, but instead they're going to go north, take on San Francisco, their conference rival. They win and expand up the Western Coast, and that'll be some more land for them. Jacksonville State, they're going to go east. That's not going to be against Indiana. It's going to be against Kennesaw State who they actually beat Kennesaw State, a tournament team, in their own conference. And Jacksonville State was one of the worst teams in the day, son. But Jacksonville is going to knock off Kennesaw State to take parts of, even into, I believe, South Carolina. A nice win there for the Gamecocks. Fairfield does not have land. Delaware going northeast to take, uh, excuse me, northwest. And, oh my goodness, they actually beat Penn State. 90-77, to Delaware, out of all teams, is going to knock off the Nittany Lions. So there goes their title hopes, and now Delaware controls a huge piece of land. Yale going southwest against Fairleigh Dickinson, the NCAA tournament heroes, and Fairleigh Dickinson just barely falls short to Yale. Ohio now going north, trying to take all of Delaware's land, 
and I think I accidentally messed up, but we're going to look at the Ken Palm rankings. Delaware ranked about in the 250s. Ohio is ranked about 140-ish, I think. And so, Ohio will take on Delaware. I did not mean to record all that, but I guess it is what it is. And so, uh, Ohio beats Delaware 81-73. Only Ohio takes all that land. Oklahoma State going south take on TCU. And TCU is going to win. I think TCU could be like one of the front runners to win this whole thing. I like TCU a lot, but they might have to go up against Texas at some point. Grand Canyon going north to take on Drake, and Drake survives again. Drake now going on to the southern coast, just relentlessly. Drake is going after teams, and they are just expanding. They're already huge landmass. I oh, excuse me, Idaho going southwest. That's going to put them against Weber State, and Weber State now is going to take all this land. This land has switched hands quite a few times over the past few episodes, and now Weber State gets some more land. Pacific going up against Drake, and Drake this time cannot survive. Pacific takes down Drake, and all of a sudden, these big teams are going down. Down to 50 teams now, so we're going to wipe off the teams that do not have any more land, that are left. The only one that is still on here is Manhattan. So we're going to take Manhattan off the wheel. It leaves us with 49 teams left. So about halfway through this episode, and now we can erase the graphic that talks about the teams without land, make it a little bit neater. And down to 49 teams, no more teams that do not have land. Kent State going west, that's going to be against Ohio. And Ohio wins again against the 13th seed in the tournament, Kent State, to expand more. UConn going south, that'll be against Hofstra, and UConn now expands onto Long Island, starting to stretch a li- their reach a little bit out of the northeast. Charleston going southeast, but they can't really do that, so they're going to have to spin again. And they're going to go south. Um, They can't really do that either, but we're just going to say that's going to take them... Excuse me, no. We're going to spin the wheel again. And this time they're going northeast, which they can do. That's going to be against, I believe that's Campbell, for a chance to expand far up the eastern coast. And they do. 76-69, Charleston, who I think could be a sneaky front runner to win this thing. I don't think it's going to happen, but it could. George Washington, they're trapped by Ohio, so they have to play them. And, oh, wow. George Washington actually beats Ohio. So the Bobcats go down, and George Washington takes another huge piece of land. The big pieces of land have been shifting around like crazy in this episode. And here goes another piece of shift. And it does. Gonzaga beats Weber State 88-70 to to take down the Wildcats. Damian Lillard would not have been proud. But Gonzaga now controls a big piece of land. Pacific going south. Let's take on Northern Arizona. And Pacific wins again. Expanding their already biggest in the United States land. And now, I mean, they're just massive now. George Washington, another huge team going east. That'll be against UMBC, and George Washington wins again. They have not shown up any until this episode, and now they control about the third biggest landmass in the entire United States. Iowa trying to take on Pacific, and finally somebody takes down Pacific. So once again, the biggest piece of land in the United States has changed hands again. Villanova going east. That'll be against who else but George Washington. And now it's another piece of land changed hands to Villanova. This has been a crazy episode. As far as that goes. So now Villanova takes that big piece of land. Canisius going southeast. Take on Villanova. Who else? And Villanova destroys Canisius. I hope I did not butcher that. <laughs> Gonzaga going northeast, but they can't do that. So we're just going to spin this again. Which direction will they go now? Do south to take on Colorado State. We'll see if Colorado State can expand greatly. And they can. 86-80. Wow. Now Gonzaga goes down. The number of teams that I think actually have a shot at this is decreasing rapidly. And Colorado State now controls most of the North. Villanova now going to take on Duke. And Villanova, wow, they actually beat Duke. A lot of t- games in this um, in this episode that are really impressive by some teams. Washington State going south to take on Oregon. And Washington State's going to beat Oregon by two to take that entire state, I believe. And that'll wipe out the Ducks from contention. Stonehill now, they're surrounded by UConn, so they're going to have to take them on. And UConn destroys the Skyhawks, one of the new Division I teams, by 51 points. Definitely not even a close game. 
And so that'll be the end of Stonehill. Yukon now literally controls the entire Northeast. Indiana, speaking of that, going Northeast, take on Tennessee Tech, who they have no problem with. They expand even farther, now bordering with the top team still in it, according to the Ken Palm rankings at the time I put this up, Tennessee. Chattanooga in that same direction. They'll go against Indiana, and they expand once again, beating Chattanooga pretty handily. And now they're starting to take out a few of those teams that had not played up until this point. TCU going southeast to take on Southern Miss, a tournament team. And TCU wins. Excuse me, I don't know if Southern, I don't think Southern Miss was actually in the tournament, but they were close to being in it. And TCU is going to beat them pretty easily. A lot of the white teams now boring each other, Stetson, Indiana, and TCU. Missouri going east to take on Indiana, trying to take them out. And what do you know they do? Missouri wins by 16 and taking out one of the aforementioned white teams. So now Missouri controls a huge chunk of land. Tosin going to take on Villanova because they're trapped by them. And they almost beat Villanova, gave them a run for their money. But that'll do it for the Tigers. Longhorns playing again, going west. Last time they went west, they beat Arizona. This time it's going to be against Iowa, and Texas beats Iowa. So finally, Texas has the biggest piece of land in the United States. They've been close for a while, but they finally do it, and now Texas is huge. Jacksonville State playing this is the second time in this episode. They're going to take on Missouri, who has no problem with the Gamecocks, eliminating them, putting them out by 20 points. UConn now going northwest. That'll be against Colgate. They're trying to expand their region to New York, and they do just that, beating the Raiders by 13 to end their championship hopes. Now Missouri, once again, going east at almost put them against Tennessee, but it's going to be Clemson, and Clemson beats Missouri, eliminating another SEC team. And now Clemson takes a huge piece of land. I mean, the way these pieces of land have circulated throughout this episode has been crazy. And now Clemson beats Xavier in overtime by two, and Clemson... I didn't think they were going to get past that, but they do, beating the Musketeers. The Xavier didn't have a lot of land, but still, land is land. Now, some crooked borders, though, for Clemson. It looks a little bit weird. So that is going to do it for Episode 8 of Imperialism. As you can see, quite a few teams getting big. Washington State, you have here Colorado State, Texas, TCU, Clemson especially, and Villanova. And then you have Bradley and Yukon in the Northeast, and Stetson in the Southeast. That's going to do it for Episode 9 of Imperialism. I hope you enjoyed. The map looks drastically different, and I will see you in the final episode.